Well, one thing we do know ahead of Mike Pence's speech is that the slogan for today is making America first again, a sign of the uh, populist uh, right-wing message at this convention, uh, which of course has many foreign uh, visitors amongst those here, are Nigel Farage, the leader of the UK Independence Party, and joining me now, Het Wilders uh, of uh, the Dutch uh, Freedom Party. Welcome to you. You describe yourself as the next, next Dutch Prime Minister. Uh, wh wow. Why are you here? Well, I'm invited by a friend. I'm a politician from Tennessee that I know for a very long time. And of course, it's, it's the heart of the American democracy. We know um, since yesterday who the candidate will be of one of the two parties in the United States. And um, to be here is very, um, um, I'm very honored to be here and to focus. I mean, on I mean that so. nationalist message, yes. making America great again, America first. Yeah. That accords with your view for your country of the Netherlands? Well, you know, not only my view. I think that what you see happening today in the United States is quite similar to what we see all over Europe. We see that a growing amount of people feel misrepresented, feel even abandoned by their political leaders, the political elite today. They see uh, problems every day when it comes to losing their jobs or terrorism or immigration or Islamization or crime, even often on a daily basis. And um, they see that the current leaders are not addressing it, are still being very politically correct. And now we have a leader, I hope he will be the next um, um, president of the United States, that says, well, um, I'm not being politically correct. I'm going to address all those issues. And the normal people, what the Americans call the blue collar people, are very enthusiastic about that. And you see in Europe, with my party and other countries, the rise of similar parties as well. You would agree with what Donald Trump now calls his suggestion of banning all Muslims coming into the United States? Well, you know, um, I think, um, and I have to agree um, with that kind of policy, I believe that not all Muslims are bad people, but I believe that the Islam um, is something that um, goes um, not together with liberty and with freedom. And we have, with this open door policy of the last decades, in all of Europe, we have, without having any demands of assimilation of and integration, because of this political correctness of the millions of people who came to our society. And I always tell my American friends, if you let um, Islam being seeded on your soil, don't be surprised that you will harvest Sharia law. But, uh, I mean, there are more than a billion Muslims in the world. Can yes. we keep them out of North America or indeed Western Europe? Well, I think we have to. Once again, not because all those people are bad people. It would be ridiculous to suggest that all Muslims are terrorists, but almost all terrorists are Muslims today. You cannot close your eyes for that. So indeed, I would, if I would become the Prime Minister of the Netherlands next year, after I would win the elections, close the Dutch borders for immigrants from Islamic countries immediately. You'd be only, only be able to do that, of course, if you followed Britain out of the European Union. Exactly. I mean, in order. We transferred our sovereign rights, not only when it comes to our monetary policy or our budgetary policy, but also our immigration policy. Um, we transfer that to Brussels. So we have to regain our So you would hold a referendum? We would hold a referendum in the Netherlands for what we call a exit, the Dutch leaving, in order to be able to toughen up our immigration policies. It cannot be done, and it will not be done by Brussels and the European Union. You have to become a sovereign nation again in order to do that. If what about Muslim people already in Holland? I mean, Holland, you have yeah. a history of colonialism like we do, which yeah. includes people of that religious faith. What do you do about them? Listen, if people are in, in the Netherlands already, and if they abide by our laws and our constitution, they are not only free to stay, but equal as anybody else. But you else. regard them as a threat, nonetheless. No, not the people. I regret or I see the Islamic ideology as a threat. I see it more as a totalitarian ideology mm. than a religion. So if the people abide by our laws, they are welcome to stay. But if they, as they often unfortunately do, if they start acting according to Sharia law and commit crimes and they have a double nationality, I believe we should strip them of the Dutch nationality and send them packing. It's the only way I mean, to well, deal Dutch with it. Well, Dutch people commit crimes as well. We strip them of their nationality. Well, they have only um, one nationality. That will be very hard to do. Most of the uh, people from Islamic countries in Holland have for instance, the Moroccans, one of the biggest community, have double nationality. And I'm sure that there is so much support that if you abide by our laws, you are welcome to stay. Mm. We will close the door for new immigrants from Islamic countries. If you are here and you abide by laws, you're welcome. But if you commit a crime, if you start acting like Sharia law, then there is no room for you in a free society. We have to defend our freedom and the liberty and the safety of our children. Do you not, do you not feel that you and perhaps Donald Trump are 
exploiting fear and encouraging division in our societies? No, we are not exploiting fear, you know. We are defending the freedom of our people and all those political po correct politicians that in the last decades with the open border policy oh. let everybody come, like I said, without even the demand of assimilation in our society. In Holland today, to give you one example, 73% of all Muslims in Holland believe that Dutch Muslims who go to fight in Syria are to be considered heroes. We cannot afford that. People have not been integrated or assimilated. So I say the good people, of course, can stay. But let's stop the Islamization of our free societies in order to stay free and liberal societies. What do you make of the people here who are describing you as a Donald Trump lookalike? Well, maybe it's because of my hair. I don't know. Um, um, but um, no, well, um, I'm not a Donald Trump. Yeah. I'm just here to I mean, you're very politician. different. You've been yeah. in politics a long time. He, I've been he, in politics. He's, he's a fresh arrival. He's an outsider. He's an outsider. And he's, um, I think, very popular for that reason as well. I had a, a burger here uh, at a hamburger shop. Um, I will not mention the name. And I asked the lady who was giving me the Big Mac. I told her, well, are you going to vote? And she said, I think she was 25 years old. She said, for the first time, I registered to vote because I want to vote for Mr. Trump. And without him, I probably would not have voted, but certainly not for the Republican Party. And I believe that if you manage to get people in the political process to vote, you are doing a very good thing indeed. Hat Wilders, thank you very much indeed.